All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, I'm back on the Cadillac this week. So I've got a little bit of good news and a little bit of bad news. So I was having some camera troubles last week, and um, I couldn't get footage of me final fitting this rear piece and trimming it to fit it. I don't know what was going on. I'm still learning the, the recording and camera stuff at this point. But the good news is I have to make it for the driver's side. So I missed a little bit, but we'll be able to kind of refilm that on the mirror side. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pull this out, I'm gonna set it up, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paper pattern the front section, I'm gonna paper pattern the back section as well. That way I can duplicate it, but in a mirror. So if you haven't watched my video on paper patterns yet, where I did a Model A quarter panel, I highly recommend watching that because it covers a lot more of the information in detail. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pattern these, and we'll go from there with laying it out onto the sheet metal and starting the fabrication process on the, the mirrored image parts of this Cadillac. Got the passenger side inner fender panel off the Cadillac. Uh, it's laying here on the table. So now I'm gonna start laying everything out with our paper patterns. So follow along as I do that and we'll move on from there to lay out on the panel and starting a fabrication. All right, now that our patterns are made, it's time to go ahead and get ready to lay our patterns out on our material. So on this project, I'm using 19 gauge draw quality steel, which is a little bit more formable or shapeable. Um, it's just made a little bit different for situations like this and stampings. So that's the material I'm gonna use. And I wanted to take this second to talk about cleaning your material before you lay out your patterns. Uh, for anybody that has done sheet metal work or I guess any kind of metal work in the past is known, it's one of the most frustrating things ever to lay out some tape and it, the tape won't stick, it keeps peeling off, uh, your sharpie marks get smeared around. So that's very frustrating and it wastes time. So I have a certain way I like to clean things. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through that. So this is pretty much straight off the shelf. It's got dust and oil and stuff on it. So I'll kind of cover how I like to clean things, whether it be steel or aluminum. 
and hopefully this little trick helps you out and kind of saves some frustration and aggravation um, with your guys' projects at home. So here in the pump can, I just have uh, rubbing alcohol. So I'm gonna come over everything and just kinda scrub everything down with some rubbing alcohol to start. So I'll go over everything really, really nice. And you can see how dirty that material was. So I'll just lay this one here. So then what I like to do is I'll take spray away glass cleaner and same thing, I'll kind of liberally apply it all over and I'll take a fresh clean towel and same thing, just kind of scrub it clean. So our rag is still dirty. It's not as bad as at first, but there's still a lot of dirt and oil on it. So I'll do it again with the glass cleaner. So if you look at your rag like this one, there's still a little bit of discoloration from some dirt and grease, but not nearly as bad. So <clears throat> just watch what your rag's doing as you clean it and get everything nice and clean and scrub down. So from there, I'll take another fresh towel that's dry and just kind of dry wipe to get the rest of the glass cleaner and any kind of residual residue or anything off. So at this point, if you're curious if it's clean enough, if, um, if you can't tell by just looking at your, your rags or your towels, you can take a piece of tape and you can stick it to a few spots and you can see how well it's gonna adhere. So usually after three wipe downs, it's pretty good, but you know, you always want to make sure your tape's going to stick to your material for layout and you're not going to smear Sharpie marks. So that's how I like to clean everything. So I'll put the cleaning supplies away and then we'll start laying out our patterns. With our first pattern, we're going to position it onto our panel. So you have to keep in mind and take a look at your pattern because I noted that we wanted to add three quarters of an inch all the way around that. That way it gives me a little bit of extra wiggle room in case the shape migrates in the panel a little bit. So just keep an eye on what your note says because you don't want to line this up on the edge and actually need an extra three quarters of an inch, inch, two inch, whatever you need. So I just kind of space it away from the edge a little bit. And just like with the pattern, on the piece we're trying to duplicate, we're going to take our magnets and we're going to start putting our pattern down on our material. And we're trying to get the, the pattern as flat as we can. Again, like in my previous video, I'm real weird on magnet layout, like just being consistent. So I'll go all the way around and get our pattern laid out. So now that we have the pattern magneted down, I mentioned that there needs to be a three quarter inch perimeter around our pattern that gives us a little bit of extra, um, a little bit of extra material to play with. So what we're gonna do to offset that, instead of coming in with a tape measure and measuring you know, an offset of three quarters of an inch all the way around, we're gonna use three quarter inch tape. This is very accurate and it can help clean up any edges that are kind of wavy. So, you take your three quarter inch tape and you line it up with the edge of your pattern and you just trace the edge as an offset.
Then I'll come back in with my razor blade. I'll just clean these corners up. That way when we lay it out with our marker, we can completely go around and we don't have to run into this tape giving us any false information. All right, our perimeter is done. So then we'll take uh, an ultra fine point Sharpie. I like to use those for all our cut edges just due to the fact that it's a much finer line. So we're gonna aim small and we're gonna miss small even all the way down with our Sharpie here. So we'll come all the way around. We'll use the edge of our tape as our guide. So from there, our outside of our pattern is laid out. And next, we will have to come in and make notes of where all these lines are. So I'll show you that step right now. So a trick I like to use to lay out where these inside lines are for like our light lines and blend lines, you can move your magnets and you can fold this up kind of like this. But you're gonna, it's not gonna be that accurate and there's a potential you could tear your pattern. So what I like to do is I like to use a center punch and we'll lightly punch on these lines to give us where we need to be and then we can kind of use our tape to clean that line up if need be. So I like, this is a spring loaded center punch. It's not like an automatic one. You actually have to pull up on the, the hammer. So then you can really dial in how hard the hit is. So you can, you can just leave the ever slightest mark. So with that punched, um, we can get ready to pull our pattern off of the parent material. And when I'm punching stuff, what I like to do is where our shrink marks are, I like to punch at those uh, intersection points at the top and here. That way, it also helps me line up where our shrink marks need to be. So the only other thing I need to note before we pull that off is I am gonna just draw on our tape here where the bottom of our shrink marks are. And we'll also have to come back because there's a little bit of stretch here after we do our initial shrinking, we're gonna have to stretch that flange back out, but I'll lay that out later. So right now, we can pull our pattern off and I'll do a quick zoom or a pan across the panel so you can see the little center punch marks. And they're nothing really to worry about in this instant because they were so light, it's just gonna mark it. And by the time we shape everything and blend it all out, they'll be so minor that you could run over it with uh, 80 grit on a DA and you'll never even see the marks. So the only time you have to be really cautious of that is if you're dealing with aluminum, especially on aircraft parts, you can't be center punching the panels. So I'll pull this pattern off, I'll come over and I'll show you the marks. Uh, I might circle a couple of them because they might be hard to see, but I'll show you that and I'll set the camera back up and we'll move on to more layout. All right, I circled a couple of the center punch marks there that you guys can hopefully see, but you can see all the other little ones, the way this, the light's reflecting off of them. So I've got our three quarter inch tape again and I will come and find our center punch marks and I'll kind of use an average here. And follow our marks all the way around. And I'll kind of use our pattern as an overlay just to make sure we're in the right, right area.
So for this line, we can use the thicker Sharpie because all it is is a radius line or a light line. So I'll come in again, use our tape as a guide, come right around. And I will repeat that process on all of these points. Now we can take our straight edge. We can come in and line up our punch marks. For our shrinks. We're gonna use these approximately. Same thing, I'm kind of splitting the difference. And all of our shrinks should come out roughly perpendicular to this line. Again, if you watch my previous video on making patterns on the Model A quarter panel, I talk a little bit more about that. But all of our shrink lines should come approximately perpendicular to our light line here. So then we can take our pattern we can peel the tape off. So we've got our border. We've got our layout. So now we can take our pattern and we can transfer all our information here. So this is our blend area. So now we have our initial shaping roadmap laid out uh, off of our pattern onto our blank. So I'll move the camera, I'll pan over the top so you can see all our notes have been laid out. I just went through and I transferred, you know, all the shrinks as SH, all the radii, kind of our blend areas, all of that stuff. Uh, I transferred that from our pattern we made from the part to the bare material to start our new panel with. And after that, it'll be move on to cut this out, trim it, deburr it, and then we can start the shaping process. So our panel is ready to finish cutting out. I use the power shear just to clip the edge off a little bit. So I like to hand snip my final cut line around. So I'll use some mid Midwest red handled snips and then I'll deburr the edge with a large Vixen file. Now that our blank is all cut out and deburred, uh, we can go over to the power hammer, get it set up, and we can start our initial shrinking process.